Hey, Leif, how's it going? Hey, great to see you, Richard. Thanks for having me. It's, it's an honor to open your event. It's, it's huge. It's got the biggest names out there, so I'm excited to be a part of it, excited to kick it off. Yeah, for sure. I hope you can see me okay. Yep, I can see you perfectly. Um, we can hear you loud and clear. And let us know down below in the comments if you can hear uh, myself and Leif perfectly. And um, yeah, I, I shouldn't have an echo. Um, I believe I muted it. So let me know if that's still the case, guys, in the chat. Um, we're, we're still working things out. Day two will be much smoother, I promise. But um, just to introduce Leif, um, you guys probably know him from Twitter. He's a, a great follow. Um, and obviously, he won the U.S. Investing Champion of, 20, of 2019. He's also a serial entrepreneur and obviously the founder of Champion Team Trading. So we're really excited to have him on. He's the aficionado on high tight flags, which is going to be the subject of this presentation. Um, and with that, Leif, I'll, I'll leave it to you and um, I'll come back in with any questions. And uh, yeah, uh, best of luck and looking forward to your presentation. Okay, well, thanks so much. I mean, I think I've got about 49 charts, uh, five slides. I got 45 minutes. So let's get this going. But I'm going to call this expanded high tight flags. I know we have maybe a, a, a different title on the presentation, but I just kind of trade around high tight flags. It's, it's more or less uh, the most powerful pattern out there. I just, I want to take that power. I want to capitalize on it. And uh, it's, you know, credit to William O'Neill, obviously the pattern, it's, it's uh, a pattern that moves, you know, 90% in, well, let's get to that, down to this, 90% <clears throat> or more in eight weeks or less. And there's not a whole lot of information out there on it. Uh, you know, as part of my trading journey, I would just constantly go closer and closer to the highest RS stocks and trading those. And what I ended up settling on is basically you know, 90 RS plus uh, stocks and, you know, high tight flags. I actually prefer these. Okay. So, uh, and a little bit about my trading journey. Basically I've done everything you could think of, you know, you know, looking through candlesticks, chart pattern. I've been a member of all the different services, uh, you know, Minervini service, Zanger service, uh, definitely, you know, more of the pivots and, uh, power plays from Minervini's and the volume is very important. And Zanger's, you know, real inspiration on the relative volume and, and, the timing and trying to get that right when, when the, <clears throat> and this pattern to me, it kind of talks to me over time, you know, you get better at these patterns <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, I got cold too. So let will get through this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you, it kind of tells you when it's ready with experience over time and the volume kind of confirms that, uh, the best patterns form, you know, during a bull market, obviously the, the high tight flags and you want the flagpole from the bottom to the top to be at least 90% in two months or less, 100% or more is preferred. The more power, the better for me. Uh, you know, you want high tight flag, it forms in three to five weeks. That's the standard one. And you're going to say, okay, well, these aren't all standard high tight flags. That's why I call it expanded. We're going to see kind of ways of getting around that. And I'll go as short as seven days, which is, you know, not really a textbook, but you'll see why. And then I'll go into even a rocket base, which is from a failed high tight flag, a new base, six to 10 weeks. Uh, and you want to decline the volume through the, the peak of the flagpole to the low of the flag. And, you know, you see your time coming up. Uh, here's a little example, Celsius, you know, flagpole is number one, you know, it's got to have that 90, 90% uh, percent rise or more. And, you know, the flag, it has to flag out three to five weeks to be a standard one. Uh, you want the volume to kind of decrease in the pivot here. Uh, or throughout, throughout the pattern rather. And, you know, I'll use the diagonals if they're meaningful, if there's uh, several points, you know, you want more than, more than two points actually for it to be meaningful. Otherwise you're just kind of, you know, putting it to where you want to buy it. You, you got to let it tell you when it's ready. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, obviously, you know, some kind of a pivot number four, the green line, and then you want number five, the pivot volume you want to come out. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly. This isn't the complete scan for it, but the most important part of this slide is the, uh, the, the risk return and so today's close. You want it in the last eight weeks and you can do a little, you know, wider one. You want to go maybe 1.8%, you know, 1.8. So you get maybe 80% rise in eight weeks. So you can start tracking the big movers, see how they're doing. Uh, a lot of this other stuff is how you can just find tight patterns. And, you know, if you want some kind of more information on this, you can obviously, uh, email, uh, or, or fill out our contact form at champion team trading. Uh, that's, that's the site I started, uh, after the <clears throat> winning the U S investing championship, 
I was going to kind of do a, I was going to do a private fund actually, but so many people reached out to me and we were, you know, trading in private and I was doing so well. We just, I was having too much fun with that. So I had my developers build this platform and we did it in about a week and we didn't open it for a while because we I thought it might be distracting as we were doing too well. That was 2020 where you could, you could draw a line across the top of anything and, and, and make some huge money. So um, that was a fun year and you know, February I went to red signal now I'm back on green again. So uh, let's see what else we had here. So execution, we're gonna get into all, into all this on the charts, obviously, but uh, you want the market and the group condition, obviously, let's see, you want that to be good. You don't want to buy something in a, in a dying group, basically. Uh, let's see, get some notes up here before you read through this. I mean, you want the indices to be working. You want the group that the stock is in to be performing. Uh, you want to look at your recent trades and you want to kind of have your own market signal. Obviously, I kind of have my red, yellow, green uh, signal. You want to know if you know, if you're making progress and, you know, you're getting traction, incremental gains and all that, you know, then you can go bigger, obviously, and, and attack these patterns. And you want to track how they're working. You know, if, if all the high tight flags are failing and are just poking their heads out, uh, you have to think in context. Okay. That's, that's really important. Also, uh, the pattern and the pivot, you know, base, you want to average true range. That, that's really all I need to know. If we have a tight pattern. If the average true range is declining, and that's an old, uh, you know, trend following position sizing tool that I just got used to having on my screen. And the, the, the best breakouts always have a declining 14 day ATR into the pivot. Uh, so, you know, and then you want to look for little things too, like shakeouts and things like that to prove that, you know, all the weak hands are out of a name. So <clears throat> those are always kind of bonuses. Uh, you want the highest relative strength stocks. Obviously, I probably wouldn't attack a high tight flag that was under 92 RS. I think the 91 is, is a cutoff. It absolutely don't work. And that's the market Smith rating. Um, let's see in your stop placement, you want to know where you're wrong and you kind of want to <clears throat> see if it makes sense. If, if the, if the pattern is too, too wild, like say uh, UPST, this one, I tried that recently and got whipped out. It was, it was too wild and the average true range just kept going to the moon. And I was happy to make a little profit and get stopped even, but if it's too wild, it's, you know, maybe not the best best trade and you can't get a stop in there that makes sense. I mean, I prefer to have a stop around 5%, but that's not the rule. It's just maybe less. I love less, but you know, sometimes you have to stagger your stops too, if you really want something, uh, and your size, it's time to be aggressive or defensive and you want that relative volume when it breaks out, you definitely have to have uh, relative volume coming in to, to show that, you know, at least at some point, sometimes you can come in after. If the chart pattern is absolutely perfect and maybe the quiet volume kind of means something too. But if you, if you have the big volume come in, that's uh, definitely a sign of institutional buyers and that your stock may be ready to move out. And when it kind of comes across the plate with 10 times relative volume, right at the buy point, it's hard to not pull the trigger if the environment's right. So, and then our multiple scales, I'll start scaling out depending on how I'm doing and what the market is, what my signal is, um, in our multiples is kind of a Van Tharp concept. Uh, so, you know, I'll show some big winners and they kind of take care of all your losers. And, you know, if you, if you trade average and have some huge winners, I mean, that's how you can kind of, you know, compound those gains and put those risk multiples, um, <clears throat> back to work and, and size up. Okay. So, all right, well, let's, let's get, let's get onto some slides here. I don't know if we lost Richard, <laughs> you still there? Yep, I'm still there and we're getting a lot of great questions for the Q and A. So um, okay. do you want me to jump in with questions? Do you want to say- no, I just felt like I was talking to myself for a second. I lost no, everybody. No. <laughs> no, I'm still here. We, we're okay, getting some good. really great questions. So uh, it's okay, gonna be fun. So I'm speeding through that only because I have, you know, 49 charts here <laughs> and most of this stuff is in these charts and, and you know, we're gonna talk about all that. Um, so this is the traditional type of high tight flag. And the reason I put this one first, and I've done this one before quite often because it has the can slim stuff and trader lion has a lot of great content on, um, you know, O'Neill stuff. And, you know, it has the end, which is for the new product or service. And this was a new energy drink and new energy drinks can be absolutely huge, you know, monster energy, bang energy, all that stuff. So this just started to form up and, and not a lot of people knew about it. Uh, but 
and it's not like I, I wouldn't have it on my radar because my scans are going to pick this up, but I have to see something new. Um, and we're going to get into one that where I don't see something new. So there, there's all the reasons, uh, you know, I, I'm not just a pure trigger, man. I, I, you do, you do think through all the scenarios, you know, you have to, otherwise you're, you might be just, you know, buying something that's not going to go anywhere. So this obviously went up to 60 bucks from here. So, uh, you know, this, this one went, I, I did sell it right into that earnings pop. And that was kind of an area that made a new base for a long time. You could have got back in at several different points, but you had the, the pattern, you have the, you know, 60, 161% in eight weeks or less, very tight. So you could just, you know, you could buy the top of that probably, you know, the tighter they are, the more you can just buy the top. Uh, but I'm waiting for that volume trigger. And, and if it gives me a pivot, it just tells me it's ready. So that, that's where I hit it and, uh, you know, sold into those spots up there. And I'm just gonna scroll down here real quick. Okay. Give me one second. All right. So CRSR, so you're gonna say this is not a high tight flag because it's too short. This is only seven days. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of information, a whole lot of rules about the high tight flag other than just the basics, you know, three to five weeks and you know, a 90, 100% or more rise. So, I mean, my, but is I'm just looking for an entry and a pivot and a real powerful name. So it, it has this, uh, this huge power and a rule of thumb for me for an IPO is I just cut the rules in half. So if I allow a 14 day, uh, high tight flag, which is a short one, I'll do seven for an IPO. If it sets. And the, you know, the warning was the out. Everybody says, well, how do you know to get out on this chart? It shows you. The ATR is kind of doubled. That's kind of a, a, a spot, big volume down coming back in as a spot. So, you know, selling into strength is, is usually what you want to do. So I didn't have too much left at that point, but you know, then you're out. So, and I think something like this was like a 26 R trade or something. It, it put like the tiniest stop and just got really lucky with this kind of moving out there. And that takes care of a lot of losers. And then you can size up and you know, try to be like Oliver and get the thousand percent, right? You know, that, that, that was an amazing performance that he had there. So, yeah, so th there's other ones like DQ. So this is interesting because people want to know like where to measure it from and does it count if there's this supply in here? So, I mean, I'll measure off the low in this type of a base because the highs, you know, comes this base. I I'm trying to make some rules because at least these are my rules. I mean, you could say they're wrong or whatever, but you know, when, when you have a base in, inside the, uh, the pole. So this is the pole, the rise here. Uh, you know, you don't want the base in this black square area because now you're just buying the end of a big base. Uh, so you, you want, I want the pole to be like 45 degree angle with not really too much of a base inside. And there might've been a little, you could argue that's a sort of a little base inside there, um, which is maybe almost a strike against it. You want kind of a smooth, um, smooth rise. And most of the time, you know, if you have to argue if it's a, is it a high tight flag or not, it might not be the best pattern, but in context, you know, like I said, during this time period, you could draw a line across the top of these powerful stocks and, and buy it. So context is key. You're going to say, well, that doesn't work. And it might not work, you know, last month, but maybe next month it works again. And then, then you're back in business and there's plenty of swing trades to do in between. And I'll show some of those too, but uh, so you want to measure from that low up to the top. And I'll take what I can get is with a, a little tiny pause even, you know, right, right in context and, and these were working, but there was a little sloppy. So I, I didn't think it would go too far and I was right and it came back and I, I didn't, I got out before it would have stopped me even there. And eventually it rolled over, but you know, at the time these were, these were all moving. So my red signal wasn't until February 12th. So, uh, and tiger is another one and you'll say, well, well, which one was this? This was 20, what percent or 17. So that's in the tolerance of the 25%. But when you have DQ, let's see, what was the percentage here? Yeah, that was the same one. Okay, so we're going to Tiger now. So you say, oh, it's slightly over 25%, but I give it a little more room The with a more powerful rise like this. And if in context it's working, I'll kind of allow it and look for that opportunity to get in there. Um, as this just got more volatile, but the volume dropped out. They didn't want to sell the low if you see the volume there. So I just gave it a try only because it was the new high and it was, it was 10 times volume coming out and that's the, the relative volume. And I use, I use Finviz for that. I mean, I use every tool from MarketSmith to stock charts to Finviz. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of screens here and 
uh, it does, I don't have a tan, but I should from all these screens. And maybe that's not so good for you. right? <laughs> so he got this thing coming out and bought it and just sold into that. And, you know, tried to ride it for that bigger move in case it turned into an E hang or something like that. It went up 300%, but, you know, kind of rolled over and that's the kind of sign it rolled over is the market signal got difficult and, you know, you got a big drop there. Uh, but you see these big skyscraper bars. That's what you want to see coming into the pattern. And like I said, I'm just, I'm playing around this power when I can. It's just my favorite thing to do. So uh, Zim is a trade, you know, during this time, there wasn't a lot of stuff working like this, but you know, you have a new IPO. I call this a high tight flag measuring from the low there. Um, make a, a lot of allowance for obviously for IPO basis. So uh, this high tight flag was rather tight. There, there is a diagonal there with, you know, three points. Uh, very useful. And then, you know, also you can just draw a line across there, make a pivot. So I'm actually buying that pivot just to prove uh, it came out. And this is maybe some of Oliver's wick play in there, right? I mean, the, it, the, to me, the wick play is fine at a pivot. I actually like that. And I, I'm glad that someone reads candlesticks. I, you know, I love reading candlesticks because they tell you so much. So it's, it's a good tool to add to your, to your toolbox uh, to, to trade, you know, looking at the candlesticks and say, well, what does it mean? It opened on the low and then it closed on the high and all that. So uh, but basically sold in that because of the difficult market conditions and, you know, didn't take the rebuy, which was maybe on this uh, bar in April, which might've been like the 10th or so. So, you know, as, as this became a, a leader in the space and they're all catching up now. And it's kind of funny because it set up a new high tight flag. And I just bought this uh, on Friday and it had almost, you know, real tight area again you know undercut it's an ipo so i'm giving it you know that allowance you know trying to get in as, as low as i can with maybe stop below the previous day or better so uh you know as it's coming out over the previous day's high it's, it's always coming over the previous day's high but you know if i'm gonna buy it i'm not gonna buy it like in the bar so <clears throat> and you can see the average true range the bars are actually getting more constructive through this pattern and it might be extended it might might need a rest or something but you know you know i'll show you this one here. So there's another one. A lot of these names in the group are just taking off. Yeah, Zim had a secondary, so maybe it takes a, a minute for that to, to digest. Uh, but you know, these are all coming out. And this is one I actually tried, but it kind of confirmed my red signal, right? So I tried this one in April. Yeah, it was a little short and it just kind of rolled over and stopped me out. And even if I, you know, tried it at a better buy point, you know, maybe I would have sold some into strength, but that was, that would have been probably a full stop too anyway. So it was just a difficult uh, environment between there and the, the next signal. So that's when I'm going smaller and, and stops happen on these two. It's not a magic, magic pattern. I wish it was, but you know, you have to earn your money. And uh, I did this one recently is UAN is a, a ag play fertilizer, I believe. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, the pattern kind of tells me when it's ready, right? I mean, this is this is ready enough. I mean, it just doesn't want to move around a lot. You know, you've got the volume dropped, uh, the average true range. You don't need, you don't need the average true range to know. I mean, just look at it, but it kind of helps illustrate the idea um, that, that it's getting really tight there. And there's some power there we can't explain. So uh, people want that. And I just bought that, you know, as it turned up on, on this day over the previous high and, and just sold it right into that. Uh, but, you know, this was another high tight flag buy point right here. So and it's even forming one uh, now, if you want to be really creative and kind of say that's a high tight flag, but you know, it's kind of coming in and out. So you might want to raise the, uh, the blue line there to the top. Cause I made this a few days ago um, as this popped out. So. Leif, I'll actually jump on yeah. the question if you don't mind. Sure, uh, sure. We had a really good question, I, I believe from Johnny about kind of the circumstances that the high tight flag occurs in. Do you prefer it to be kind of dormant before that first 100% mm -hmm. move and then form the high tight flag? Or is it okay if it's in kind of a longer term uptrend and, and maybe a continuation out of the base? Uh, both, but it's all in context. If it's dormant and people just discover a new product or service like Celsius, the dormant is great. Uh, but, but this can work too. Is this going to be a monster trend? I mean, it, you know, that Celsius is going to keep going. Maybe it does another high tide flag if, if they get their, their stuff in order. They just did a secondary, I know. But, uh, but yeah, good question. It, it just has, it all depends. It's all in context. I mean, I can't really answer that exactly. You know, it depends on what stock we're talking about, uh, how far it's come and, you know, how it looks. You know, I'm, I'm trading the, the perfect pattern if I can. So, but this is a good question. Something, definitely something to think about. And if I'll just continue here too, I guess. So 
So Rick is one that's kind of like, this is a high tight flag that I didn't try as it kind of poked out, but this went more than five weeks. So now you're just talking about a base and I just, I call anything from a failed high tight flag, a rocket base, even if it's, you know, in, in the uh, decline of 25% or less, the rocket base is from a high tight flag I call is failed from either the time, which is another thing. So now it's a rocket base or the depth is too much. It needs more time to get out of the base. The depth is 25 to 50%, nothing more than 50% depth on that. Um, so yeah, so I started to watch this and this is one of these things where there's no new and the, there's no N in the can slim here. The, the pattern's good. The volatility dropped the rise. You can see on the average true range, uh, you know, they kind of sold it around earnings or waiting for earnings. So earnings often create the pattern itself or just a big seller. I mean, if you go hundred percent move, uh, most you know, trend followers will sell into that. And that kind of creates the high tight flag. But then you have to have new interest and have it digest a little bit. So as this, as this pops out and comes back in, waiting for earnings, I uh, got through earnings and I, I bought it coming out. But the, the thing about, you know, thinking about the pattern is like, you know, what, what's so new about, about Rick? I mean, this is, it's a really extended, uh, it, you know, it's a low float stock, but, uh, you know, it's only, it's got nothing new to it. It's the same old bag, right? So, so this thing came out, I sold a little bit, take a risk multiple, and then it was a stop to even. And, you know, th this failed, I don't know about this note on this one, but a failed breakout, you know, you can create opportunity if it comes and flushes everyone and sets up again, but it didn't in this case. So we're just going to, we'll skip that. And this is kind of a example of a rocket base is, you know, almost 400% move. Um, but it, it declined more than 25%, less than 50%. So I, I was hoping to get a buy point on this, but it just kind of gapped and it's got all over the place. And I mean, this is the power I'm looking for. This just kind of illustrates the power. It was just being watched. I was kind of getting more volatile towards the breakout. So I kind of stay away from that. And Leif, I'll jump in again, because yep. um, I think you made a good point there. Um, how do you deal with gaps um, through the pivot? Do you just kind of ignore it? Maybe, maybe wait yeah. for a retest. How do you deal with that? I, I try to, I try to buy it right. Or I kind of pass, uh, you know, no more than one, one to 2% past the buy point is right. typically what I'll do. And, and sometimes if it gaps to two, three percent, it's just going to come back in. So, you know, this is kind of hard to deal with. It wasn't coming from a tight area. That's another thing. So if it gaps 1% from a tight area that I, and I meant to buy it coming out, I might take a shot at it, but I'm not buying the, uh, the earnings gaps, uh, you know, out more than 2%. And that, right. has to be a, that has to be a planned trade too. I, I, I'm going to need to have that on my list and want, want to be buying it because of the group strength, the market conditions, how I'm doing all that stuff, if I have room for it and all that. So, And actually a, a quick follow-up, um, as a stock is, uh, is approaching a pivot in the morning, what are you looking for during that day? Are, are you looking, what, what time frames are you looking at? What are you looking for in terms of volume, relative volume, all those different circumstances? Well, there's a few tricks that, that we use and we're working on this at champion team trading all the time. We're, we're, we're trying to come up with every, every way to improve the, the odds of the trade working. Uh, and, and that's that, that platform, you know, that I trade on and come see me there. If you guys want to check out this trading style where I, I put all these, these trades and these are all actual real trades from the service, uh, that I'm putting on here that I, and I traded myself and, uh, yeah, what was your question again? <laughs> yeah, my, my question was, um, as the stock is approaching a pivot, you've got, right, you've obviously right. planned it out beforehand. What are you looking for? What time frames are you looking at all of that? Okay, so I'm um, obviously we're looking at the weekly and the daily. The, the pattern has to be there. The group strength has to be there. Um, the similar names have to be, you know, sort of firm. If there's one that's just ready to go for some reason, it better show me some volume. And if the rest of them are not really catching up or, you know, the group is kind of weak. Uh, so on the day, I like the group to show something, some, some strength off the open. So I have tools to show me that, you know, right away, if the group it's in is positive and I'll match, I'll kind of match it all up and I'll be like, okay, uh, you know, I'm improving my odds here, 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 and there. And that, that's the stuff we're working on all the time. So I want to see the volume come in the relative volume, um, you know, like this one here, AMRS. I mean, I wasn't sure if that was ready. It just had, you know, volume drop. You know, coming in the last interview we did, I bought this. So I wanted to follow up. This is kind of funny. I showed you that I bought it this day and, uh, it's more than the 25% drop. And I wasn't sure, but the volume came in and, you know, in context, all the stuff was working. The group was strong. 
it has this power. So I'm looking for any excuse to get in there. Uh, it only slightly tightened up, but that's what was working at the time. Um, you know, this is when I was, you know, maxing out, you know, buying stuff. Um, and, it, and it just went up and I'm selling into strength when I can and, and saving a piece as long as I can in case this almost set up another high tight flag. But the relative, uh, the relative volume came in and showed me that it was time to buy it uh, from a uh, risk reward perspective. And, uh, you know, just selling into strength when you can, saving one for the, for the long, maybe, maybe it moves up, you know, 500% from here. So, right. And um, on this one, it actually looks like a pretty, I mean, it, it's not a super stubby base, but it's only like 10 days. What's, what's kind of the, the shortest length of a, of a tight flag type um, yeah. base formation that you look for? Yeah, the one I showed you, the, the, first, the second one was CRSR. That was seven days, actually. So, but that's an IPO. So there's certain reasons to do it. And if these are working in context and, you know, they're, they're getting shorter than they're, they're working, that's fine. If we're in a trickier environment, I'll want more time. Uh, and, and it has to show me, you know, it has to show me, show me this wants to go. It's got to have some volume and it's got to have the, the, the tightness right at the end. And maybe even the volume dry up at the end, as you can see this day in February, uh, maybe that's kind of at the low. They, they don't want to do anything with it. And then, then they start buying it up there. So. That's your reverse pocket pivot, right? Yeah, I guess you could say, yeah, we talked about that reverse pocket pivot is just the opposite. It's just, you know, all of a sudden everybody doesn't want to sell it at the low. That tells you something also. And then then they turn in and, and start buying it, you know, then it moves 166% off that low, basically, you know. So it's good risk reward stuff is all we're doing here, basically. I, mean, I don't know that it's going to go. We're just taking a stab at it and uh, managing risk accordingly. And um, this is more of this, more of the power coming from the high tight flag is the rocket base as is it, is it almost went below the 50% threshold, but I allowed it. And the deeper it is, the longer you want this to be. So I like, look for like six to 10 weeks, um, just did kind of the standard pullback buy in there. And uh, just, you know, at the time, you know, you could pretty much buy all this stuff and, and, and they, were, they were hot. So that's a hundred percent move and just selling into that strength on kind of volume I couldn't really read. So I, I didn't even wait for the next day. I, you know, there's a few sales in, be in between that, of course. Uh, but this is the, the rocket base. This is me playing around the high tight flag. Um, and uh, here's a recent one. And, you know, I, I trade kind of contest style. It's kind of funny. We're starting this conference with high tight flags and contest style trading. Uh, so don't, <laughs> at least it's Saturday. So you guys can learn some more risk management and stuff with the other speakers if you're new before you start trying this stuff because you can get whipped out of this very quickly too. So what we're doing here, I had this on breakout watch. Uh, I don't know where you can see the, the, blue, uh, the blue line there, the breakout, blue breakout watch rather. This kind of went up more than two risk multiples if you were gonna try it. So probably would have sold some into strength and stopped even on this one and uh, you know, just kind of fully reversed on you. So that they do come back in. It's not like a magic pattern, but if you trade, you know, aggressive with that aggressive risk management that I, that I use, I mean, you can, you know, definitely make this not a win instead of a loss, despite this kind of whipping you out. Yeah. And can we actually talk a little bit about that? Because um, yeah. obviously with these super fast movers, you have to be ready for the downside, even basically as soon after you, you buy it. So can you talk about how soon you move your stop up to break even and how you might take profits even on that first day if it makes a powerful move. Can you discuss that a little bit? Yeah, well, that, that has to do with my market signal, which I come up with based on how I'm doing, indices are doing, the setups are doing, on and on and on. You know, it's the NASDAQ over the 50-day. You know, IWO I look at because over the IWM, which is uh, IWO plus IWN. So IWM for my style of swing trading and this style is kind of a, it was an old habit, but I, try, I remove the value. So IWN, like Nancy, is that's got to, you know, it's better to take that out. Look at the IWO. And if you check that chart, you'll see uh, I'm constantly looking at it. And, 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 you know, my red signal on that chart was February 12th. And that was basically the high because we're extended and things stopped working. They just got a little crazy. So it was good to book all that money and, and, and you know, kind of play smaller until things started really hit, kicking off again. Uh, and, and recently, I mean, I started trading some bios like this one, BNTX, and uh, I changed my signal because I got I got three bios in a row that worked pretty well, and I kind of messed this one up a little bit as I, you know, sold into some strength. And 
this thing reversed on me, but I moved my stop up too quick. So, you know, it, it still could come in, but look, you make it profitable when you can. Nothing wrong with taking a profit on, on some, because if you just leave everything open all the time, you're going to, you could get whipped out of all your positions and you didn't book anything. So that, that's another key. So I'll, I'll book a little as I go, as I put, you know, some more stuff on, because I'm trying to make sure that if I get whipped out, I'm not going to have a, a, a drawdown that's, you know, that's too crazy. So uh, <clears throat> here's like another recent one. I sold some into these highs here, still trying to play it for a bigger move. As uh, well, I guess I got to explain. This is the 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 pattern here. Is it, it's really not a high tight flag or a rocket base. I just kind of discounted this right here. As as on this day in this area in context, I was you know any, any biotech I touched, it just went straight up. So it's just we we're looking at the, at the the strength and the movement in the biotech. And if you check the ETFs then and everything, it, it kind of matched up. So I'm looking for pivots. I'm looking for tight areas. You can see the average true range came through there. So in context, I just kind of ignored some of this decline here and just used the overall pattern. It was tight enough. And uh, maybe this goes to the moon and without me, but you know, I made a little bit on that one. Uh, BAK is you know, another, a lot of the, the same, more of a diagonal. So I love confluence of two different chart pattern, right? Chart patterns, you have diagonal, you have a, uh, a, a horizontal pivot. So when those two come together with massive volume is a 2.4 times R vol at the buy point. And I'm sure by the end of the day, well, it probably held, I don't know what it was, but it might've got higher after the, through the buy point um, as the volume's coming in, you know. So that, that's something to look at, that confluence and that the ATR is that tightening, the volume dropped through the pattern. And, you know, this is that standard three to five weeks. And uh, I'm trying to get in as low as possible so I don't have to buy the high, I'm saving, you know, 5% or more doing that. And I can get better stop placement. Uh, so, I mean, that's a little more advanced in how to do that for someone that's starting out, uh, drawing a line across the top, it actually would have worked for this one still. So it just kind of shows, uh, you know, when the power is there, they don't really quit right away necessarily if, if the market conditions are right. Um, and, and here's another one. Everyone's looking at this one, BBW, uh, build a bear. So the, I don't know, this is anything new. I, I heard it's not so. I just think, I think they do custom bears and maybe, uh, I don't know if it's a meme stock or something now, but anything can happen these days. If those, the wall street bets gets a hold of these things or something, but, uh, you know, they, they get that big rise and people sell into it, but there's nothing new there for me. As far as I know, I mean, unless they're doing something, I think they sell custom bears, but it's gotta be perfect. If I'm going to try this, I want the moving averages to catch up. Uh, I want the three to five weeks. You know, I want it to look good. So yeah, maybe, you know, this could work, of course. I, I don't, I never know. I mean, these can just go without me too, but I want the perfect setup and it's a little bit volatile still for me. So sometimes you just know if it's ready or not. And uh, PRTS is one that I traded is, uh, is really the best example of the average true range. If you just look at this, I mean, I'm buying the end of that. I don't even need to look at the chart, the volume in this. Uh, and the chart is just tight. It's just a tight chart, almost like a merger, which is great. So, you know, you could, you could, I would have to look this up. If, if you showed me this chart, I'd say, okay, this has been bought or something when I look at that. Uh, but you have the diagonal, uh, and, and the horizontal pivot coming over the previous day's high. Uh, that's where I'm buying and selling into earnings there. And once again, I'm not sure that was anything new. It was just mostly the, the perfect setup and, uh, I think they sell car parts. So, you know, it's just kind of like money's moving in that area. You can try it if it sets up right. And uh, for, for that one, there's a little bit of a nice shakeout day. Um, it pulled back to the, the 21 EMA right, right there. So uh, is that something you look for a little shakeout within the tight price section as it's setting up? Yeah, I do. I, I wouldn't think that's the, the strongest shakeout. I mean, I, I think I'll show some better ones, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, absolutely. Towards the end, I love a good shakeout to prove that all the weak hands are out, that it's real holders and, I do like a shakeout and a reset and I like a reset. I mean, right now, so we're, we're working on tools uh, in champion team trading. We're kind of tracking the shakeouts even. I mean, this is, you have to game the game within the game, right? Like this, uh, like this movie inception, right? The dream within the dream. It's just like, you constantly, there's like so many layers to what we're trying to do here to really get it right. It's, it's a little more complicated than just smashing the buy button, but you know, it, it is good to be 
decisive and know what you're why and when to smash it of course but we're all we're all we're playing all that stuff you know so and we had a we had a good question here um about placing that first stop loss um how, is there a specific way that you do that is it a percentage is it a technical yeah. level well i won't touch it if it's going to be a huge stop and maybe if i maybe five to seven percent is the most i'll do right. i might stagger a stop if i do that but if i can't get a stop kind of below maybe the previous day's bar it's probably not a good tight area unless you're just playing pure momentum and, and you know it just it just goes bang like this and maybe there's a bar below it and you can't get the stop before uh but that's not a great reset then and like i was saying right now we're looking for we're tracking about we like six day resets than three on IPO at the moment on, on IPOs. So, I mean, that's not 100 percent going to be going to work every time. But, you know, that's what we kind of are targeting right now when we have uh, reversal bars and things like that uh, that kind of junk up the chart. Uh, and as a chart gets junked up, that can be for a lot of different reasons. And we have constantly talking about that with studies and stuff. So um, it's, it's definitely something to note. Yeah, like this looks very wide and loose here compared to the previous example. It does, but if you check if you check the average true range, it's kind of to right. the eye. This is why I use it. It's like, okay, well, my scan will tell me that this is tightening up. Mm -hmm. okay? And then overall, it's just, it is kind of a big base. If you put like a big cup under it, and then maybe you're getting a handle on one of these. And the volume here just told me it was completely dead. Right. And one of the things I'm doing is timing the group movements and steel on the weekly and monthly time frames is you know something that is really strong and if you get a three or four day pullback and just kind of not really weakness just kind of no interest in in the name uh people will kind of it'll kind of drift off and this drifted off on low volume and i wanted to see it turn up you know off of this 50 somewhere and it kind of bounced and turned up and my stop was right below the 50 day which is a good good spot for five percent or so and you know, luckily I thought I was a genius, but it was mostly the wall street bets people that squeezed the shorts and the CEO came out saying, you know, the shorts are going to be roast and all that. So a little bit of luck, but a little bit of timing to have a protective stop below the 50, which is a, kind of a good spot. Uh, as, as this is a strong group and I kind of was feeling they'd probably come back into it after a few days. And that's, what's been happening as you know, it's from, you know, the one horse to another, just constantly jumping back and forth with the group movements right now. Um, as, as they're, starting to get smoothed out, but now we're going into technology. So we have like, I have like PayPal and SE open and stuff like that all of a sudden. So. Right. And we, we've got some questions here about what, what a reset is. Can you talk about what you mean by a reset? Yeah. A reset is maybe like the BGFV. We just looked at kind of broke out and failed. It, you know, you need six days of another kind of form up of a pivot. Right. It's typically what I'm looking at at the moment. I mean, sometimes it can be longer or shorter, you know, depending on if it's uh if it's 2020 again, you know, when you, you just, you can't lose basically, you know, then it gets difficult after that, but it, you know, that's the context thinking that you have to do, uh, to, to sit at the table and, and, and think about, you know, what's going on and is, are they resetting faster? Is the, is it really hot money coming into all this stuff? What groups are the strongest? And just cause steel still was the strongest and it just took a little break, but I, I figured they just jump back on it. So if this turns up, I'm back in. So. Right. And actually going back to that example for just a second. So here you entered a kind of reversal before the pivot. Is that right? It reversed off the 50 day and yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm just, I'm using this as an aggressive pullback buy, right? As it right, takes right. out the previous is kind of coming in slow and it kind of came out a little fast off the 50 day. So that has some power too. Uh, there, there's obviously institutions I'm, I'm guessing that we're buying yet. You never know. Okay, that are buying off that 50, as you can kind of tell here, they're starting to support it through April. And uh, they're not going to give it up below their, their buy point there as, as easily. Not, I, I wouldn't think so. So, you know, and then I'm buying that there and I'm selling, I've sold a little, almost half of it already at this high, at this high area there. So, and I'm getting a little looser with not selling so quickly because of my signal changed. And, uh, you know, that it, it's like goes back to the batting average. You know, the batting average is not as important overall as it is like to know, okay, do you suck right now versus like, are things really hot right now, you know, and then you have to press it. If your batting average is getting lower, then you go, you know, you're buying at a trickle, 
you know, you're buying little test stuff or whatever. So smaller buys. So when things start working, like right now, I mean, I, like I said, I showed you a couple, I have open do double digits and all that. So I, I think I have about 15 open and maybe one, one is a little bit under underwater, but you know, it's, oh, they're all working pretty well. So it's all about being in the right place right now. And, you know, thinking in the context of where the money is going in the groups and it's easy to get it wrong, but if you work at it hard enough and study it, you know, you can probably do pretty well. Uh, this is an old one going back to the end of 2020. Uh, e Hang, was, this is this China thing where everyone's going to fly around on a drone in the future and stuff. So, you know, this was working, U UAVS was working. So this powerful move, I give it a little more wiggle room. That's just my rule, right? So it's just the way I do it. It's kind of dormant, something new going on here. And at the time, all this stuff is working. So um, I, I even bought this turn for, I, I don't know what I netted on that, maybe 20%, but this, this buy here was the better buy. And I rode that for almost 100% as the, the full move was 366%. So, you know, I was selling into that red bar, the, the final uh, in January, the, fir the first big red bar there, thinking that it was going to roll over. But man, was I wrong. That thing really ripped there. So, but that's okay. You take that, take that money and you roll it into something else. Uh, some other drone stocks or whatever, like UAVS at the time. Um, here's an example of just a, really tight one here, just eight days, uh, big volume coming out. I'm not sure you would have been stopped or not, but, but this worked for 150% as it just tightened up at the end. And that, you know, that kind of tight action in, in the high tight flag kind of tells you it, it could be ready early. And, you know, with that, you know, there's hardly a decline there. So you're, this is the thing you want to pay attention to from a risk reward standpoint, you know, you're risking one and you're, you know, you're making many, many multiples there. So. On, on that particular example, yeah. um, are you buying through that high or are you buying through maybe the, the pivot of the prior day's high from that really tight action? Uh, well, with that volume, there's yeah. two things I could do. Buy over the previous day's high or the new high. So I didn't take this trade. It's just, you know, going back, you could, you could have taken either right. one, basically. Right. The lower one would have kept you in the trade for sure. The higher one uh, probably would have stopped you out but then it reset and took off. So uh, it's not always easy like that, though. It might trick you with one or two moves like that. So it's just, yeah. Something and then, and that, that next day wasn't super easy either to, to deal with. It was right. Right. So it came back in. And so <clears throat> it, it's a little short and, you know, I was trading other stuff that was working and, you know, th this isn't perfect, but it's just showing you the power behind this first move. Right. It can continue. And that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to play. Uh, versus the, the smaller swings, but I'll trade those two and I'll, and I'll show you some of those and um, showing some EDRY. So this is more like why I bought Zim. I mean, there's a lot of power in the group. Obviously this is a new one. Uh, this is a high tight flag, more or less, if you allow 0.5%. And maybe it's a little short, but we'll just, I, I'd consider it that. Uh, even though it has maybe some, some little supply up in this pole, but back here, overall, it's just kind of coming from a dormant state. But it didn't really have a huge volume uh, kicker here other than these two. So this one's a little strange, but up here, this is more of your classic high tight flag up 185%. Now you've pulled back within the range and it, it needs more time and it needs to tighten up a little bit. But EDRY is one to watch, I guess, as a current high tight flag in case anyone's not watching this in the future, you, want, you know, looking on Monday or something. Um, Fubo is one I traded. Uh, it's, it's a high tight flag that, that failed. And this is the reset. It's a good example of the reset. So this was a one, two, three, four, five day reset with a, you know, as it turned up with huge volume, I was even late to buying it, but you know, this is a make, making over hundred percent on some, some of the sale there and, you know, selling it, coming back in. Uh, and this kind of illustrates why I don't trade bases that are 50% or more with depth, because as this fails, uh, you know, now you're 61% from the high to low, the base decline. It needs so much power to get out of this that, you know, there's really, I don't know if people were trading this, but to me, there's no buy point that just got super crazy there. I can't find a pivot in here. And then it just kind of fails because to try to get out of this hole is huge. I mean, you got to really turn the ship around and it takes too much power. And this is like one of the reasons I didn't trade 
uh, I think Tesla, you know, the last base, maybe it was the base last year was over 50% depth. Um, but sometimes they'll work like Tesla did, but you know, Fubo is an example of why I don't touch it because you come out, it's like trying to climb a mountain, right? And then you, you slip and fall and you got to go all the way back down the mountain there. So just kind of something to think about and uh, Hecla mining. Uh, I was talking to Matt Caruso. He owns, he owns this one. I hope it's okay. I tell everybody that he's making money on it. Uh, I was looking at it to see if it was a high tight flag. Cause it looked like one on my phone. And uh, when I was playing around with that, and th this is not a high tight flag because you gotta go back two months from this, this peak here in June and you're only getting 75%, but it's a powerful, you know, it's a good, it's a flag, but it's, I wouldn't say it's the high tight flag or I wouldn't say it's expanded high tight flag. You don't want to start stretching the, uh, the power behind it. The power is really the key. You have to have that hundred percent move or 90%. I prefer over a hundred, uh, you know, you want to have a lot of power behind it. Uh, another example of not a high tight flag is H Y R E. And maybe somebody would say it is a high tight flag because of the move, but I wouldn't consider this one for my purposes because, uh, and, and once again, it has another 50% or more base depth and that maybe that's why it slipped back so far to, you know, down here, which is, you know, from 14 to nine bucks. So it's kind of a too deep this space. And when you try to crawl out, you, you, you know, you slip once again, but I guess some earnings and, uh, changed it around. So off that low, you have the hundred percent move and it could work like a high tight flag, but I'm not going to treat it like one just because this, there's this supply in the pole here at, at this high area where, where the flag is basically back here in February. So I kind of want a clean 45% rise. I don't want a base in it. And I've never really had, heard a lot of people talk about this. So I think it's kind of important to kind of, everyone can kind of set, set their own rules. This is the way I play it. To me, this is a big base. So you can't play this as a high tight flag basically. And uh, okay. so. Live Oak Bank Shares is another one trying to get get a turn off of the the low of this this barely pulled in, uh, so I'm trying to get this turn as things were working well at the time, um, aggressively buying this as it turns up on volume, just selling that. I think I tried it to buy the turn at the end of the year there, thinking maybe they would just it would be the a new leader for next year, and then had to stop small there, but overall it was good trade, uh, just just selling some into strength there, and you know trying to get back in though maybe in the wrong way, maybe too aggressive. Um, uh, M MGNI is another one of these. This is, I'd say it's a high tight flag. You know, if you want to measure and be, be really technical about it, the, the, the depth is over 25%, but sometimes if it's they got that huge power, 250%, and maybe most of that, anything over the 25% is just in a, a light wick like that. And, and that's like supportive volume almost as they come in and save it there. Or you could argue it is or not, but it, you know, it, they didn't kill it there. They, they took it down and put it back up, put it back together. And then I was waiting for it to kind of neatly set up and bought the turn coming out and, uh, you know, close some up about, you know, almost 50%, but missed, I usually missed the, the top. I mean, it's, it's hard to get the top. So you want to get paid. And as these roll over, you're going to be feeling good that you did get paid and they can always turn around and make you feel stupid. So, you know, you want to, you want to get paid when you can. Uh, some more about high tight flags, like this is an IPO NGMS. So some of, and we were discussing this on the platform. Some of the, sh the strikes against it are these little kind of mini bases in the, in the pattern, in the pole. Uh, but overall I would give this the high tight flag. I kind of overrule that because it is an IPO from November, 2020. Uh, you know, the, one of the things I also will kind of make a rule for for myself is if there's a decline in the poll of more than 50 percent i may want to avoid the pattern because it could be faulty and you know it's too erratic i mean it, there's not solid support for the idea if you're going to slip 50 percent in the poll uh, but there's not too many examples of that so or, or if you slip 50 percent in the poll usually it's not going to heal itself and it won't be a high tight flag it'll kind of just kind of be over so that's why i just don't have too many examples of that but um yeah, you don't want that overhead supply. You don't want to, you don't really don't want a base in the pole. That's the big thing. Unless it's an IPO, be a little bit you know, more lenient with the whole situation. Uh, and here's another rocket base example that's kind of current. 
And I tried this in here and scratched it and was right to, cause you know, it went down. I mean, the, the ranges on here were a little too wide, uh, but you know, it did get out and started working and you know, now it has the big volume on the end of this turn here. So uh, th this kind of reversal bar, I just kind of call that a malfunction bar. It's kind of malfunctions up the whole chart. Uh, so you have to measure the depth from there. Now you have the, don't have the high tight flag as, as it was setting up. Uh, but that doesn't mean, I, th that's why I use the rocket base you know, I'm looking for six to eight weeks of this now. I'm trying to get in on this power any way I can and uh, see, you know, the, it continues and big volume at the end. Uh, I don't know why, but, you know, it's still got the power. Uh, ORMP just, you know, here's a big move from a failed high tight flag. This kind of rocket base that went on maybe a little too long, but in context, bios weren't doing anything. So I wouldn't expect it to really get out, you know, on time. And like I was saying that, that this time, all these, this pattern and all the bios were working, uh, just kind of buying the new high of the pivot there. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a move from a failed high tight flag, uh, just a big base, kind of cup and handle-ish, you know, average true range is kind of tight, uh, working for now. So we'll see. I already took some profits on that. And OVV, I already got out of this one. Just sold it into strength, just rocket base, failed high tight flag. And, you know, barely over the 25% depth there. Um, just, just looking for the end of this pivot to show me something. And the volume kind of told me that was the spot. And just buying into that and selling in, into that is uh, just your standard swing trade from the failed high tight flag, or as I would call, call it, sort of like a rocket base, just... Uh, and maybe soon everyone's going to be putting up those rocket emojis that are really annoying. Maybe this is an annoying name I hope not. pattern. <laughs> maybe this is an annoying name for the pattern, but I, I called it that at the time because everybody was doing it. So I was just trying to fit in guys. Don't, don't yell at me. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Leif, do you want to transition more to the Q and a portion or is there some more charts that you really wanted to uh, show a concept with? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, here's the pile driver bar. I just, yeah, I go for it. it. Pile, driver. The pile driver, just something, something new, right? So as you have a, a, a nice breakout, you're in the money, couple couple percent, sell at a risk multiple or two, and it, it just completely runs every standard stop, not a reversal or something like, like the full stop on everybody from risk multiples out. I call that the pile driver, kind of like a wrestling move, take you off the top ropes and uh, another failed high tight. Well, not a failed, I wouldn't call this a high tight flag. This has the base in the, in the flag. So uh, we're almost there. Get right through it all real quick. S bow was one, you know, put this on. You could freeze frame that one, look at it, it looks pretty good. SKYT is one I bought that we're still waiting on here. Uh, TGLS is setting up one for next week. This was the UAVS trade. Is this, I traded it twice there, you know, it kind of made this a cup and handle rocket based situation. Whatever was working then, you know, when you get volume 2020, that was, that was easy stuff. So. And here's a, with nothing new in the, the N and cancel UNFI, it's, it's only got, it's only going to go so far. So I, I wouldn't really try that one coming out and uh, VUZI, not a big deal. Yala rocket base from last year. So yeah, I mean, let's do some Q and A. That sounds good. Let's do it. We did um, it. Yeah. And thanks for going through all those charts. It's great for people to kind of train their eyes on past examples. That's great. Sure. Um, sure. We, had, we definitely had a few questions about, um, position sizing, how many trades you have on. I know it, def it probably depends on your market signal, but what, what's kind of a rule of thumb for you um, in terms of position sizing and how many kind of open trades you'll have at any given time? Well, coming in from cash is difficult because you have to start getting in with a kind of a smaller bias to make sure you're right to get in at all. Right. Uh, so once you get those in the money, I start betting all those gains and start swinging out of some at, with partials. So Coming in from cash, you'll, you'll get a bunch of positions. Like I said, I have around like 15 right now. Uh, you know, I do have a service. So I'm showing as much as I can, obviously. And, but, you know, I'm trying to carefully get my money in the market and incrementally get up there. And you're going to sell at risk multiples as, as you go. So that, that's definitely something that it can change. And you don't want too many positions. It'll be like herding cats. I mean, you know, right. 10 to 15 is, is probably very manageable. Uh, but you don't want to have a mutual fund either, but you kind of want to let these stocks work. Like if I, you know, open Yale and I'm up 50% here, I'm making new trades, but I'm selling some of this. Now it's not a full position. 
<laughs> but it might be the same value if it's a 50% and you sell about 50%, you know what I mean? So there's a lot to consider. So yeah, no, great. And we also have some questions about kind of dollar volume, thin stocks. Um, yeah. some, some of the ones you, you showed maybe had low average um, dollar volume. So is there a kind of a rule of thumb? Because obviously you, you want to manage risk as, as much as possible. And some of the thin stocks can move quite violently. Yeah, I mean, the thinner the stock, the more careful you want to be, probably a smaller size. You don't want to be more than 5% of the float that trades. Right. Because uh, you might get trapped in a down, down draft if there's no one to sell to. Uh, I prefer the big liquid leaders. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't trade anything under $5. I'd rather trade, you know, actually the average high tight flag, according to the stats, is about $12.6 or so. Mm -hmm. So if you see something in that range, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised because, you know, it's like Celsius. Before you become a $60 stock, you have to be you know, $11 stock or 12 or wherever. I actually kind of bought it in that area, so. Yeah, do you want to go back to that? And, yeah, so and that's show that right there. I mean, right. So you you have a, something around ten dollars or so, right? Okay, so I, I really I don't want to go to five bucks if I, if I don't have to, unless it sets up perfect, uh, for different reasons and you know, shorting the stock things like that. But you want you want funds in it and things, and funds aren't going to buy pennies, and you know you want you want to trade liquid stocks if you can. Yeah. And uh, we haven't, I mean, you talked about the N and can slim. Um, obviously your style is your style, but do you look at fundamentals at all earnings sales oh, or sure. it's really just technicals? No, I love, I love the, the sales earnings margins acceleration. You, if you have that matched with the chart pattern and the volume, yeah. uh, you know, they're basically giving you a layup as far as the risk reward. It doesn't mean it's always going to work. Um, but you know, that's, those are the ones you attack the hardest and, and focus on that. And, try not to buy something without the story. I mean, if you're going to buy the hottest new energy drink at a high tight flag with volume or Rick at new highs, it's already gone 200% and there's nothing new yeah. there. I mean, what are you going to pick? So right. there you go. And uh, we had some questions about um, kind of the, how peculiar 2020 and even the beginning of 2021 was. So um, yeah. how, like uh, using this style, um, are there opportunities every year or um, sometimes it's much yeah. better? Obviously 2020 was exceptional, but in general, are, do you find a lot of setups like this? Oh yeah. That's why I was showing some right now. I mean, there's plenty of them. Uh, I'm right. in a few uh, high tight flags at the moment. Uh, definitely. I just showed like a rocket base. It's, it's from the high tight flag. Uh, just there, there's plenty to do this. If you know how to scan and that's why I started the platform. I was, I was going to do, a, a private fund and I was doing this trading with all these traders all over the world and getting all these great ideas. And I, I was making so much money in 2020 that I didn't even open the platform for a while. Cause I didn't want to be distracted or, you know, superstitious. I don't want to change it. It was, it was too good at the time. Um, but not, yeah, now when the groups change and you, and you switch the signal, it, it, that only happens two to three times a year. And 2020 was a little unusual because of COVID and all that with the, you know, juice in the, the markets and things like that. Right. So I don't trade that aggressive. I showed a lot of aggressive trades on there. But that's a work at the time. I'm just kind of showing the power of the high tight flag in those huge moves. And uh, right now, I probably wouldn't do some of those trades because that's not what's working right now. Yeah. And uh, I see some people are asking about screening. Um, Leif shared the, the screen at the beginning of the presentation. So feel free to go back and look at that. Uh, but in general, um, I assume you take that screen, plop them all in stock, into stock charts, and then just look at a bunch of charts to find the best setups. Um, it, yeah. Yeah, you still have to do work. The screen is not magical. You have to you have to find a setup, a proper setup, right? Hundred percent. You start tracking them, and you have to be patient. Just let it come to you. If you're not patient and have FOMO, it's like on Celsius. You know, somebody tried that in early June and got stopped out, right? Because you know, it wasn't ready. It didn't have all the signs, and you know, and everybody can see this. I'm not the only. You know, like you said, we we can all screen for this stuff, but the timing and and all that, that's a whole different ball game that you have to work your way up to, especially if you're a new trader. Uh, and you have to have the confidence and definitely it's like starting a business. Uh, you know, someone asked me the other day, how do you start a business? Cause I've, I've done many, many of them and sold them and uh, started from scratch to selling them. The thing is you just start like trading, just start, do one share, you know, see how it acts, but do real money. Cause you, if you don't feel it, the emotions, you're never gonna master the emotions basically either, so. You have to have real money at stake, but only things you can afford to lose if you're starting out, obviously. Yeah. And in general, um, 
would you say the high tight flag is a is a strategy maybe for people who who have already traded a bunch of breakout strategies and are a little bit more advanced or do you yeah. think even beginners can get started with this uh, but obviously yeah. you have to manage risk properly right well i would say play, play like me go all the way all the way to the end and skip the rest i've been doing this since 96 uh, trying all kinds of different strategies and just settling on the most powerful stuff it, it's like being a, a explosives expert or something you get good at that versus a guy that trades utility stocks, they, they move right. different right. financials and these kind of growth stocks that have high tight flags You're you just have to practice it. And it's just uh, seat time. I tweeted about this the other day. I have a, a very well, well-known poker friend. I'm not going to say, but he, I said, so how do you know how the game's going to play out? Cause this is kind of my thinking is I have quite a few poker friends actually, cause it's just kind of like interesting way yeah. of thinking. They kind of game everything out and it's kind of fun. I don't play poker though. Cause it's very personal. I love, I love uh, trading, impersonal, right? And when you look, you don't have to look someone in the eyes that takes your money. <laughs> but anyway, what he was saying was, it's just seat time and that's no secret. Everyone says seat time, but you only get to understand how things play out over time, just, you know, with practice and it, it takes right. time, but you're going through several cycles of, of, of boom and bust trying to trade these, you're, you're gonna understand it a lot better. So don't expect to be the best at it right away, but it'll, it'll come. Right. And um, could you go a little bit more into detail about selling into strength and kind of a rule of thumb that you use to do that? Because it's definitely something that I've struggled a little bit with. Um, the stock's going up. You want to keep holding, 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 because it's yeah. going to go at 300%. But it's it's good to take some off the table, pay yourself a little bit, and protect yourself a little bit as well using that strategy. Well, the, the best thing to think of is like, if everything comes back in on you, you didn't sell, say so you have 10 positions, the one jumps out 20%, you didn't sell any. Right. And they all come back in. You didn't make any money. Right. So you want, you want to be booking it along the way to protect yourself from that. But yeah, I mean, your, your signal matters too. If I'm on red signal, I might sell one risk multiple out 25% stop to even or half stop to even. Yellow signal, maybe two risk multiples, maybe half stop to even, no stop to even. Green signal, I'm just a little more free with it uh, as you have gains to play with. And you, know, you might not take such a quick uh, risk multiple sale because you want the size on to run these hundred percent moves. Right. As in Celsius, I waited quite a bit to sell because it was working pretty well there. Uh, that that's something. And then you have size in the game and, and, and you're making bigger gains. So you don't want to choke it off. Uh, but, but sometimes just get a free look at the stock and getting paid for it. You get a, a risk multiple out sale and then a stop to even, uh, this is the more contest style trading that I do. And, and, and show and work on and we have to change the signal and it's it's a moving game throughout the year and it's you know two to three times a year is when you're gonna be able to really make some big money and i'm very careful to say if i'm on red signal it means it's like maybe 25 percent or less invested yeah uh, you know because i, I want to say it's just my real trading just want to say you know if growth stuff's not working you know maybe i'll go to the, the beach but you know i'm still working on it. you don't want to leave the game completely but you want yeah. you know what i mean metaphorically you, you don't want to be trading so Right. You're, you're, you're using your trades and what's working as feedback about the market conditions. And exactly. if, if you're, if your style isn't working, why press your luck? You know? Um, right. Yeah. Um, there was a question about um, entering kind of extended short term, I guess, within the base. Um, yeah. Do you prefer when a, when a pivot shows up kind of closer to uh, maybe one of the moving averages, the 21 EMA, just, just so you're yeah. not, you've got some coil there, you know? Yeah. You want, you want to have a stop, below one of the previous bars if you can you want to have a pivot to find a new high it only works at certain times like yep. right now it's uh, that's a little too sloppy for right now um the rocket emoji year which is 2020 line across the top and then you know the the, the brinks truck comes the next day right uh, that, that was easy this is a little more tricky so uh that, that's the thing to do Def definitely know when that's working and when you want to get in carefully right and have it signal you that it's going to go maybe with the volume right so and um, how soon are you moving up your, your stop loss to break even if, if you get uh, a nice move out of, out of a pivot? Definitely at several risk multiples on moving a stop to even because, you know, when, when you get up 15, 20% to turn that into a loser, that's kind of a, you know, stupid move in my opinion, you know? Right. So that's just the rule of thumb, but the signal determines that really, you know, if I'm struggling, I don't want to take the risk. So if I get any gain, I, I take the risk out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, going to green signal and, and uh, 
not struggling, that that's where you want to be. And the stocks will tell you that if you're in the money on everything, you know, it, it, you're in the right places and the money's coming in, then you're more, I'm more loose with not moving the stop up right away. Maybe give it some room to come check back and, uh, you know, see if it wants to play with break even or not. Right. And here's a really good question. Um, are you buying all your position at once at the same time, or are you scaling a little bit in? <clears throat> Mostly buying all at once. I'd say 90, 90, percent of the time buying all at once but you know you saw crsr was this the, the second chart here yeah i bought this twice right in a row because of you know the the ipo and i, I felt like there was funds that, that needed it there and the, you know so that was just i don't do that all the time but in the, in this case this was a big big move for two two uh trades on one so perfect but i'd rather not buy i'd rather have it all and catch this big move you see what i'm saying like because yep. there might not be another buy point. And if there is now, I've kind of messed up my cost basis if I add to it. And I'm not adding to it as it's coming out because I'm having the perfect trade. Right. If I can move my stop to even, now I'm in the money now. If I'm buying more now, my stop, my stop would have to be higher. And you, know, you kind of mess up your trade unless it sets up perfect again, which it doesn't always do. So if it sets up perfect again, I'll buy it coming out and move the stop as if it's a new trade but I've likely already sold some anyway. So it'd be more of like an ad back most of the time. Right. All right, Leif. Uh, thanks so much for coming on and kicking things off. Um, everybody in the chat, thanks for all your great questions. And uh, we'll, we'll head for a short break here, 15 minutes or so, and then we'll come back with Anthony Crudell. So um, everybody in the chat, thanks. Thank you um, for, for showing up and, and go ahead and check out Leif on Twitter. Um, he's a funny follow as well. He, he's, he's a good time on Twitter for sure. Um, all right, guys, thanks, and we'll, we'll catch you in just a bit. Thanks, guys.